Today on The Spot. Once again, we travel through space and time to bring you the latest and greatest from Tokyo Game Show 2009. We also go to a galaxy far, far away and visit Skywalker Ranch for a look at Star Wars The Clone Wars Republic Heroes. Time to look at the latest downloads this week on Xbox Live Marketplace, and Sean Lenton stops in for a demo of Operation Flashpoint Dragon Rising on the Xbox 360. Play our trivia today for a chance to win a copy of Dirt 2, and also tune in to find out how you can win a brand new PC. Today on The Spot. Hello everybody and welcome to Today on the Spot. It's Thursday, September 24th. I'm your host, Chris Waters, joined by my man, Lark Anderson. I can't get anybody else to sit in this seat because we shipped them all overseas. I know, there's no one else here, so they put me on the shot. Yes, we got you back. We got everyone else overseas, sent them into the future to cover today's start of the Tokyo Game Show. Right, with the international dateline, we've got some weird time travel stuff going on. I don't even know if the show started today or tomorrow or in the future sometime. I'm pretty sure Sean McInnes is having three birthday parties in two different hemispheres. I, Something like that, it's, yeah. It's, it's weird It's stuff. complicated science. It makes my mind spin, but you know, let's get it grounded, get back to the present. Let's throw it over to Thor Thorson for the news. Hey everyone, it's your GameSpot news update for Thursday, September 24th. I'm Thor Thorson. The past 24 hours have seen a veritable news explosion coming out of the Tokyo Game Show. First off, the Wii is getting a price cut. Surprise! As of Sunday, the console will be $199 in the US, making it as cheap as the Xbox 360 Arcade. In other Nintendo news, new Super Mario Bros. Wii is releasing on November 15th, updating the classic series for the company's latest console. Meanwhile, at his TGS keynote, Sony Games Generalissimo Kaz Harai announced that the PS3 Slim has sold 1 million units in three weeks. Other Sony announcements included Gran Turismo 5 being dated for March 2010 in Japan, ruling out a US launch this year. Wah, wah, wah. Also, as rumored, the UK will be getting a 250 gigabyte PS3 bundle with Uncharted 2, Infamous, or two best-selling games. And last but not least, Sony is offering current PSP owners three free downloadable games if they upgrade to the PSP Go next month. Ironically, the most exciting PS3 news came from a third-party publisher. Capcom announced that it is working on a version of Resident Evil 5 which will support the PS3's motion control scheme. You know, the one with the LED lights that look like rave glow sticks. The game is due out next spring in Japan alongside the motion sensing tech, with a US and EU release to be determined. And what about Microsoft, you ask? Well, the company announced the publisher's actively making games for its own motion control system, Project Natal. The list includes Activision Blizzard, Bethesda, Capcom, Disney, Electronic Arts, Konami, MTV Games, aka Rock Band, Namco Bandai, Sega, Square Enix, THQ, and Ubisoft. Microsoft also charted out Metal Gear Solid designer Hideo Kojima to talk up the project's potential, making gamers' heads explode across the planet. Well, that's it, your GameSpot News update for Thursday, September 24th. For more headlines like these, head on over to news.gamespot.com. Thanks again to our ever-vigilant news team. Up next, what's new this week on Xbox Live? This week on Xbox Live, there are a ton of new games to try out, starting off with a demo of Wolfenstein. The single-player demo lets you take control of the ever-capable hero BJ Blazkowicz as he steps up yet again to take on the Nazis. The demo starts you out slow for the first couple of minutes, letting you get used to navigating the environment and becoming familiar with the controls, but quickly puts you up against Nazi soldiers. Using a machine gun along with the help of the veil to slow down time, among other handy tricks, lets you take out Nazis with a fair amount of ease. With a fixed machine gun placement to have fun with, and a tougher than most enemy to contend with, the demo for Wolfenstein is definitely worth a download. New in the arcade, Zombie Apocalypse from Konami and Nihilistic hit this week. With one to four players, the game is like a Left 4 Dead scene from a top-down view. Locked in one area until all zombies are eliminated, you can get weapon and health power-ups through the environment as you keep yourself safe by blasting zombies. Using the left analog stick to move and the right stick to shoot, this Smash TV style shooter features different environmental hazards that you can use to your advantage. You can even throw some zombie bait down to help lure zombies to one particular spot. In this case, we set it next to an explosive barrel, of course. Grenade launchers, machine guns, and of course, what zombie game wouldn't be complete without a chainsaw? This one with two speeds, normal and execute. 
You can find Zombie Apocalypse available for 800 Microsoft points or download the trial for free. Up next, we've got the Warriors Street Brawl. The one to four player side-scrolling beat-em-up puts you on the streets as one of any of the Warriors, including Swan, Cochise, Rembrandt, Vermin, Ajax, and Mercy. In addition to the single player game, also included are a boss challenge and versus mode. A free trial for Warriors Street Brawl is available now for free as well as the full game for 800 Microsoft points. In the indie game section, Eye on Assault, a shooter that puts you in a closed environment similar to that of Geometry Wars, where you have to use your ship's main weapon to break apart all the obstacles in order to move on to the next level. Up next, Pixel Man, which breaks down platform gaming to its simplest form. Though, as you might imagine, with each passing level, the game becomes increasingly more difficult. Fishing Girl is also new this week, and as advertised, puts you next to the water looking to catch a big one. On a roll, which Sonic the Hedgehog fans will recognize. And lastly, Warships, which lets one to four players battle out in a slightly different take on the turn-based formula first introduced by Battleship. Well, that's a look at some of the new content you'll find. Be sure to check GameSpot.com and XboxLive.com for a complete list of all the new items arriving this week on Xbox Live. All right, there's a look at what you could download on your Xbox 360 this week, but let's be honest, aren't you just playing Halo 3 ODST? I am. I know I am. I am, yep. I started yeah. playing that last night. Uh, I'm, in, I'm digging it so far. Yeah. Have you uh, taken a look at the walkthrough we've got up on the site now? No, Game I haven't. Guide, help you out with the missions. I, I took a look did. at that early on. Yeah. I made sure that it was all right. All right, nice. And uh, we also have a interview with Martin O'Donnell, who's the composer at Bungie on the Halo series, and so it's a nice little behind the scenes look at what's going on with the music in that game. That music is it's pretty fantastic. Yeah, very um, moody and atmospheric. I like yeah. it. It sets, sets the different tone for a different style shooter. And speaking of different style shooter, we're taking a realistic turn with Operation Flashpoint Dragon Rising in today's daily demo. <laughs> Hey, what's up everyone? Brian Eckberg here. We're checking out Operation Flashpoint Dragon Rising. Right now we're looking at the Xbox 360 version. I'm joined by Sean Lenton, who's the executive producer with the game. Sean, welcome to the show. Hi, hi. Thanks for having me. Well, thanks for being here. Now, Operation Flashpoint, it's a military shooter, open world. Tell me what's what's new about this game. Okay, the thing that we're bringing here is um, is, is, is choice. Mm -hmm. It's all about choice for me. It's, a, it's an open world game. It's a tactical first person shooter. So, you know, you do have to use your brain. Right. Um, uh, it's a thinking man's first person shooter, if you will. But, like but we've got this choice, this, this open world. So what, what we find is that the player just has to to determine what is their best route, and they have to they have to think, you know, okay. they have to really think about how they're going to approach this game. Huge maps, lots of vehicles, lots of weapons. Let's dive right in. Our friend Damien is playing the game right now. We're going to dive into a mission. So while we're diving into this, set it up for me. What are we doing here? Where are we? Okay, so we're basically on a small island just off the coast of China. Um, it's a couple of years in the future, and China needs oil. It's always about oil. So China is uh, taking command of this island, uh, and it's actually a Russian-owned island. So the Russians um, are basically, you know, a bit upset about this, and they've asked the UN to help because as well. As this, there's also a conflict going on on the mainland between China and Russia, so they're stretched a bit thin. So the, uh, they asked the UN to help, and, uh, and the US Marine Corps, of course, comes in to help with them. So um, what we're looking at now is a, a mission called Eagle Offense, which is uh, one of the kind of middle missions of the campaign. Um, the whole campaign is co-op as well. I mean, what, what we're looking at here is you can see that uh, Damien's got a fire team here with him. Uh, the, these three guys, they're really key to how you get through this game. Um, if you play this game sort of John Rambo style, gung-ho, you're not going to last very long, basically. Right. You know, you'll, you'll, you'll you pop can a cap. try it. You can <laughs> try it, but you won't last very long. Uh, your fire team is key, basically. So there you go. You see the guys moving off there. Um, He's presumably putting them in front of them just to check out that everything's going to be okay. I'm sure yeah. he's not using them as cannon fodder. Um, <laughs> we've got a great AI system. Um, it, it's very uh, autonomous. It's a needs-based system, so they react. They have a morale system. They're aware of suppression and so on. Mm -hmm. So these guys will actually help you. So if, you, if you're kind of new to the game and just getting, getting your feet, they'll, they'll, they'll help you around. They'll okay. actually work with you. And you, but you do have control over them. Absolutely, can you can give them orders. Yeah, orders yeah. And you can tell us about yeah. We have a command radial. So um, one of the things that we try to do is, is, is you know, make this game accessible for console Three, users, zero, but still two, try and retain that PC yeah, depth uh, that, that you get in this type of game. Two. So we've got this great command radial here. We've got simple orders like move. Um, we can give a, a flank left, a flank right. Uh, we can change the formation. We can change the spread. We can even change the rules of engagement. Uh, one of the things we've got here, you see, uh, uh, Damien here firing up this uh, this uh, small. Um, the loading time for these weapons are all accurate. So it does actually take about 10 seconds to unplug this thing and put a bazooka shell in there and so on. Um, so you have to be really careful about how, you, how you're doing it. Nice. Good shot. 
So this, this mission gets going early. Starts Absolutely. With so tanks. yeah, first thing we've got to take some tanks now. It actually ends in a massive firefight in an airfield as well. It's actually my favourite mission at the moment, this particular one. Um, another thing that we've got in Flashpool, which we're really pleased with, is a, a fantastic particle system. Um, from our, our research, it became evident that uh, in real life, war is smoky, it's mm. gritty, and it, it's dirty, and so on. So you've got these huge plumes of smoke that, that really kind of identify where the action is. So instead of using kind of artificial means, big flashing arrows and so on, mm -hmm. we want the player to be able to see that there's something going on over the top of that hill just as a result of this huge plume of smoke that's coming over there. And we should also point out that this game, you can use smoke effectively in this game. That's right, yeah. So um, smoke grenades, there's actually a point to smoke grenades. Right. Um, they actually do obscure the AI, so it is an effective means. Uh, it's, it's a tactical situation. Mm -hmm. A lot of the, the situations you get into with Flashpoint are tactical. Um, it's not really a close quarter combat game. Mm -hmm. You tend to kind of find a lot of combat takes place at medium range. And so we've had to kind of almost make this kind of strategium that works around that, that medium range combat. So you've got things like smoke, which can tip the balance. You can order your guys to flank with suppressive fire. So you can keep the enemy's head down whilst you're flanking them and so on. So you really have to try and break the stalemate of, of, yeah. of the kind of the, this medium combat. Absolutely. Well, there are a few more things we want to get to, but tell me about multiplayer in this game. Okay, so multiplayer, we have, um, we have some great... Uh, two great multiplayer modes. We have Annihilation, which is essentially a deathmatch, you mm -hmm. know. Um, and then we've got Infiltration, which is kind of a, an unbalanced deathmatch. It, 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 it's one team that's, uh, that's better equipped against a larger, sort of more ill-equipped force. Mm -hmm. uh, so, for instance, uh, there's, a, there's a, a, a game we, we saw the, uh, that we were playing before, which is actually set on this, uh, in this airfield, and you have to take the command tower. So, uh, one team is basically a, a large number of guys trying to defend this, uh, this, this airfield, mm -hmm. and then the other guy is a smaller team, and he's got to sneak up, and he's got to try and surprise, he's got to figure out where, how he's going to get in there, basically. But he has all the cool stuff. He like has all the cool rifles. stuff. He has a sniper rifles, he has night vision, thermal imaging, and so on and so on. Um, and so also in, uh, when you're playing multiplayer, you still have a fire team. Mm -hmm. So ev every human player will still have three AI agents with them to assist them. So the numbers get quite big. Yeah. You know, you can get up to kind of 32 um, agents all moving around and so on. You know, and you get quite big fights going on there. Very nice. And as you were saying earlier, you can play this game cooperatively, right? Yeah, I, I, I love playing co-op. I mean, you know, games like Left 4 Dead really sort of blew me away. And right. I, think, I think they've really proved that co-op is a valid form of, of gameplay. So um, in a game like this where you've got this fire team of, of you and your three guys, it just makes perfect sense for it to be a co-op game. Um, we've kind of built it from the ground up around that. Mm. Um, the order system still works, and uh, but it's just a lot of fun, especially with the vehicles. We just have the most fun back at the studio, flying around helicopters with machine guns and rail guns firing out the side and so on. Awesome. Well, Sean, uh, the last question, of course, is when is this game coming out and what platform? Okay, so the game's out October the 6th, and it's out on PS3, Xbox 360, and PC. All right, Sean, thank you for joining us. Uh, that is your look at Operation Flashpoint Dragon Rising. If you want to know more, you can check out the game space on GameSpot. As if we hadn't sent enough editors out into the field, we sent a few more up to Skywalker Ranch this weekend. That's an actual place. That is a place. It's not a moisture farm, and I don't believe they keep wampas there, but I'm not clear on that. Yeah, I don't know if... Yeah, they might have wampas roaming the fields, but they have games. That's, have that's games. why we went there. I mean, we went to check it out because it's Skywalker Ranch. It sounds awesome. Yeah. Uh, but we checked out Star Wars The Clone Wars Republic Heroes. Yeah, you can never have enough Star Wars. That's true. Science. And the, the Clone Wars is a big hit. And so we're going to take a look at that game and also what's going on at that ranch right now. One thing I really loved about uh, the animated series and adapting that into a game was the look of it. Um, it has a very distinct look. Um, I mean, you can take one glance at it and you know it's this particular series, it's this particular part of Star Wars. And it was really interesting drawing that into an inter interactive format in the game. We used a lot of the same um, animations and a lot of the same character models that the show used. And also in getting the lighting to look correct and a lot of the textures, they have a very specific look where everything kind of has this artistic style to it. So it was a challenge, but I thought it was really interesting and fun to bring that into the game. The cool thing about it is it's just a meshing between season one and season two. It's taking those and, and telling the story, its own individual story, in between that. And then the other cool thing is there's writers involved. There's a, they have a writer in common on the game and the show. So uh, it really blends it, but we get to do it and we did it you know, the same. And I get to go in and I'm Obi-Wan Kenobi as well as Plo Koon, so it was fun because of the game. In the video game, I am the clones, as I am in the television series. The look and the feel and the tone is very similar between the two. They share a writer, and uh, they share a lot of the same visuals, 
And so it's as if you are playing inside the television show. It's it's great. It's really good. Uh, working with Dave and the guy, the voice sound guys, has been great. Um, one of the biggest advantages to, to doing this game was to be able to have early access to these guys, so we could show them all of our animations, you know, our characters. Uh, we ran the story past Dave, everything. They were very uh, good working with us early on to make sure everything was was right and you know fit into the Clone Wars story, and uh, it's really part of the franchise. Because this video game shared a writer from our show, it was actually really refreshing, and all of the lines were right on. I mean, I just felt like we were recording an episode, so it was it was really refreshing. I think one of the strengths of the game is that it's it's kind of. Um, it's easy to pick up, and I can see like an older brother, younger brother situation playing it. And, uh, it's just, it, it's a lot of fun. And, uh, and you can play cooperatively yeah. too. Yeah, cooperative. I can play with my daughter. We can, we can go on missions together. Yeah, and you can choose between Jedi's and clones. You guys just like it because you're in there. Uh, working on Republic Heroes, I mean, it was a great experience um, for me. You know, I'm a Star Wars fan, so, you know, since I was a little kid. So it's just amazing working with all the people who are creating Star Wars content now. And to kind of be part of that family, I mean, it, it really is kind of, you know, like a geek's uh, dream come true to work on a Star Wars video game. So it's been a ton of fun. For the kids that watch our show, this video game provides them an opportunity to put themselves in the show. To, to watch it on Friday night and they run to the video game and feel like they're going on a mission as Ahsoka or as Anakin. So it really puts the kids and make, into the show and makes them feel like they're a part of it. So Star Wars The Clone Wars Republic Heroes, uh, it's on seven different platforms. It's on Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, Wii, PC, PS2, PSP, and DS. And it's going to be out on October 6th. Now, if you tuned in on Tuesday, you saw our first of many segments from the Tokyo Game Show. Took you around town, showed you some of the crazy sights and sounds. We got another one coming up for you. Any guesses as to what we what we got here? Maybe some games, but I mean, you never really know what's going to come out of those guys. It's it's Tokyo. It's going to be crazy. There's it's pretty exciting stuff, and we're looking forward to checking it out. I bet you are too. So let's go right to it. Hey everybody, Sean McInnes here. I am joined by Ricardo Torres. Now, Ricardo, it's September in Japan. That means Tokyo Game Show season is upon us. We're here a little bit earlier. We've got some appointments to take care of. Today, we're actually visiting Koei headquarters in Yokohama. It's my first time here, but it's not your first time, right? Nope. Uh, I've been coming here on and off for a couple years, and this is always one of the cooler places to come to because of the building. Um, it was personally designed by Mrs. Arakawa and some of her people, and it's got this really funky Zodiac theme that kind of runs throughout. Like, we were able to get a poke around the, the building and check out some of the, the weird but very cool, like, Zodiac stuff that's all over the building and just some of the neat design. This building in particular houses, like, close to 700 people. And it's one of, like, two or three buildings Koi has in this area. Uh, one of the cooler ones is across the street. It's got this enormous sun on it with Zodiac symbols around it. And the really kind of funky thing about it is the eyes actually light up at night and kind of look out over the city, which is a little unsettling, I think, the first time you see it, but very cool. Now, we didn't just come here to check out the architecture. Koei also makes games, as you know. I saw Samurai Warriors 3 for the Wii. You saw Dynasty Warriors Strike Force for the PS3. It's really cool. Uh, people may or may not have played uh, Dynasty Warriors Strike Force on the PSP because they maybe thought it was your basic Dynasty Warriors game. This was actually like a cooperative, like almost action RPG-like thing that they had going on. It's now being moved to the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360. We got to see PS3. And now it's a little bit more like a PSO or a Monster Hunter where you can partner up with three other friends online and go beat stuff up, collect loot, have your own town. And there's a bunch of new content that's getting introduced for the platforms as well. Yeah, and Samurai Warriors, it's actually the first installment of that series on the Wii, but I like what they've done there. They've just mainly focused on the gameplay. They haven't tried to add any sort of unnecessary motion controls to the game. It all feel, feels very fluid and familiar, which is nice. All right, well, it's not all office buildings and convention centers the week before Tokyo Game Show. EA actually staged an event at a posh club in Rapongi. Let's go check out what they had to show. Hey everybody, it's Ricardo and Giancarlo here at EA's pre-TGS event in Rapongi. Now EA's gotten a bunch of people here, put us in on the 52nd floor of a building, and showed us a bunch of games. Now most of this stuff is stuff that we've seen or has just come out. You know, there's they've got Left 4 Dead, they've got Battlefield, Bad Company 2, you know, they've got Need for Speed Shift, Need for Speed Nitro, a bunch of games that we know, but 
They've also taken the opportunity to show off a brand new game that's being developed here by EA Japan. Now, Jim Carl, you had a chance to check it out, so tell us all about it. So, um, I mean, it, it, it might look a little bit familiar to fans of the Zelda game that is on the DS. It controls uh, much in a similar way where you use the stylus to move around the main character. Uh, but this game is obviously different from Zelda in that this game follows uh, the story of a little ninja kid um, who grows up in a village of other ninja kids and uh, all the elders are sort of ninjas as well. It's a little bit like Naruto that way. Um, the demo that we got to play g uh, gave us a chance to try out some of the few basic abilities. Uh, one of the most important ones is, is the main character's ability to hide. Um, so really there's a lot of stealth in the game. Uh, you can actually avoid combat altogether if you want to. Um, but there is combat, otherwise it wouldn't be much of a ninja game without combat. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's looking pretty good at this point. So there you go, brand new game from EA Japan. Hopefully we're going to get in the States soon. Now before things get too crowded here, we're going to go around and check out all the games. So there you go, that is it from EA's event here in Rapongi. We just wanted to show you the entrance to this place. It's kind of ritzy. Like I said, it's on the 52nd floor of Rapongi Tower. The view of the city is nuts. But anywho, there you go. Tokyo Game Show starts very soon, so we're going to get to it. Ladies and gentlemen, now as you can see, it is time for trivia. We've got the Big Dirt 2 giveaway as promised. And uh, yeah, we've got it for every system. Wii, PS3, 360, DS, PSP. All you gotta do if you want one of these copies is answer the following question correctly. At the start of your Dirt 2 career, you're given a car that used to belong to the late, great Colin McRae. What make of car was Colin McRae driving when he became the WRC World Champion in 1995? Answer correctly and you'll be entered into a drawing for one of these massive copies. Be sure to submit your answer using the module on the side of the page or email us at onthespot at gamespot.com and include which system you'd prefer it for. Now, this is a pretty awesome trivia giveaway, but I want to tease next week we're starting the trivia giveaway to end all trivia giveaways. Let me give you a little sneak peek here. Oh! Boom! Look at this! Fat computer, man. This is a top of the line, incredible computer to the nines. Sweet graphics card, processing, gigabytes, all that stuff. Plus a nasty 20, 24 inch, 24 inch monitor to go with it. This is a huge giveaway. We can't do it in just one show. We're starting off a trivia series. You gotta hang with the trivia best. You gotta stay with it. Stay tuned next week for your chance to win this guy. All right. And that'll about do it for today on the spot. If you like what you've seen about Tokyo Game Show from us, be sure to check back on Saturday where we're going to have nothing but a show straight from Japan. The whole thing. The whole thing. The whole thing coming out of Tokyo. Uh, I'm going to try to catch that show, but I do have a lot of weekend festivities planned really? to, ce that? to celebrate the advancement of the greatest game hero, Gordon Freeman. Oh, that. Yes. The yeah. free man has triumphed. Thank you to everyone who voted for him. Cheating, your cheating, heart is true, true cheating and uh, here. your intentions are noble. You're on the right. We all know you that your wagon to the right Snake star. is the clear winner here. <laughs> all right. I'm going to demand a recount. Now, we're going to see how this goes. All right, so for Just everyone here today on the spot, I can't speak for Lark. I'm Chris Waters. You, you speak for yourself. I'm Lark yes. Anderson. Okay. All right, folks. We'll catch you on Saturday. Have a great week. The past 24 hours has seen a veritable news explosion. I make the romance explosion. Yes, Punch down a little bit like a gremlin. <laughs> Perfect. Yes, I'm Lock Anderson here. <laughs> Just simulating what I normally do. Chattering? Yeah. Chat robot. Everybody knows chat lens are stimulated by jerky elbow motions.